it is time to paint the track in this area. So hopefully I have enough of the wall masked off or I'm not going to get a bunch of paint on it. I'm going to use that flat brown spray paint. I'm going to try to get some paint up into the tunnel. And I'm going to paint back to where I left off. Right there. All right. So I'm going to use this flat earth brown that I've been using on the track. I'm going to try to control the paint so I don't get it where I don't want it, mainly on the, my painted retaining wall. All right, here we go. I just need enough paint to cover the track. I don't need to saturate it. All right, now I'll use my cork and get this paint off the rails. Painting such a large area, this paint has had a little bit of time to dry, which certainly is an optimum. But I'll get after it here and get most of it up. Now if you paint a smaller section of track and use this cork, I mean the paint just cut, wipes right off. But like I mentioned, this has had a little bit of a time to dry, so it's got to scrub a little bit to try to get the paint off. I have the track painted. Now these electrical contact points on the turnouts will have to be painted by hand. You can see, you can see all those. And since I was painting such a large area here, there may be some spots where I didn't get all the paint off, but certainly got the lion's share of it off. So I'll let this dry probably overnight, and I'll take a bright boy to it and make sure I get any remaining paint off, but it, it looks pretty good. And I don't want to take a Bright Boy to it now because if the paint's wet, it'll just clog up the Bright Boy. And then after that, I'll polish it out with my finer grit track cleaner. I got the paint into the tunnel. I'm going to brush paint the turnouts now where I had them taped off here and here on each turnout. I'm going to use MIG Old Rust. Now it's not an exact match to the flat brown, but that's alright. It doesn't need to be. And I'll thin it down a little bit and then just start brush painting in here. The main thing here with painting these turnouts will be to avoid the areas that need to make electrical contact. And you can see there's a few spots here, here, where I didn't get all the paint off the rails using the cork after spray painting the paint on the ties and track. So I'll take a bright boy to that and get that off. All right, I painted the turnout. I got in here with the rail web here and here. And I tried to paint the rail down to this plate but not get any paint on that plate and then up here where the points make contact with the rails I don't want any paint on the inside in the areas where it makes contact so I'm going to call that good and I'll take my bright boy and I'll get the remaining paint off these rails I got any remaining paint off the rails and now I'm going to use this block to polish the rails out 
And this block really works good. And I should probably look and see who makes this, because I don't remember. But after using a Bright Boy on these rails to get that paint off, and then I polish it out with that other finer track cleaning block, and you can see how nice the rails look. I mean, they're not all scratched up. They're polished out pretty nicely. Now that I have the tracks painted and the turnouts painted, what I want to do is partially bury this track. Now, I can't completely bury the track because I have six turnouts, and I can't bury the track here. The turnouts need to move back and forth. And if I have buried track, not buried track, buried track, not buried track, it just wouldn't look right. So I'm going to do partially buried track for this entire section. Now I have a sheet of 30,000 styrene here. And I think this is about 2 feet by 2 feet. What I want to do is cut pieces of that styrene to lay down in here to try to take up some volume and same up in here. I'm going to use a lot of dirt in here but I want to keep it to a minimum as much as I can so I'm going to use this styrene just to fill up some volume. And what I want to try is to take some printer paper here and a graphite stick and then do a rubbing of the tracks, cut this paper out, and use it as a pattern to trace onto the styrene. I have my patterns made up. Now I can't do anything on the outside here, on the outside here, because I don't know where the buildings are going to go. So I can't put any dirt here or here but I can do in between. So I'm going to take these patterns and trace them onto my styrene sheet. Cut the sheet out, make sure everything fits. I got my styrene, I'll just call them fillers, cut, sanded the edges. So what I think I'll do now is I'm going to paint them with that flat earth brown paint. Something I want to try with these styrene filler pieces is I want to spray them with this adhesive and then sprinkle dirt on top of the adhesive. I applied spray adhesive to my styrene filler pieces and then I applied sifted yard dirt. What I'm going to do now is going to, I'm going to take some of my dirt blend which is two parts yard dirt to one part Sedona dirt and I'm going to start putting the dirt in around the tracks. I'm going to want to cover up most of the ties except for the areas here where the turnouts are. The turnouts will need to move freely. I'm going to have some of the ties show on the outside, but mostly they'll be covered up. Well, I'm well on my way to getting the dirt laid in here. just have you know a couple feet to go. I have the dirt cleaned out of the rail web 
up to this block of wood. So I'm hoping that my locomotives and rolling stock are going to move freely over this part of the track. I'm going to put scenic glue up to here. From here up to here. And I'll just work at a section at a time. I have my own mixture of scenic glue and I have isopropyl alcohol. I'm going to have to be really careful with this so that I don't disturb the dirt. I'm going to put the glue and the alcohol in these small cups. I just want to be careful with this. Especially around the track. I want to keep that dirt out of the rail web. I have the alcohol applied to the dirt and so now I have my scenic glue and I will apply the scenic glue again I want to be careful not to disturb the dirt And I need to be super careful around the turnouts. I do not want to get glue in the wrong places to either seize up the turnout or to interfere with the electrical contact. Well, let this dry for a few hours. And then I'll check it and see how it looks. Well, this area here has dried. The scenic glue is nice and dry. So I've added in some additional dirt and a little bit of ballast here. So maybe once upon a time this was fully ballasted, but over the years the ballast has gone down into the dirt and there's just a little bit of ballast left. Well, I'm well on my way to getting the dirt down on this track. You can see here, got some freshly applied scenic glue. This area is dry here. And I've been really careful with the turnouts. I have to get a bunch of glue on them and freeze them up. So once I get this entire bit of track done, this entire stretch, I'll come in here with the Bright Boy and the DCC Concepts block and get all this track cleaned up. And then I'll test run with a locomotive, make sure everything works like it should. Well, right here, I'm getting to the end of the dirt, and so I'm going to start blending the dirt into the ballast. And you see I have ballast track over here. Now, somewhere in this area, there's going to be a road coming across. I don't know exactly where that is, so I'm going to stop right here. But I want to get the ballast blended into the dirt here. I have my dirt all glued down. Everything's hard. Not going anywhere. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my two track cleaning tools, get this track cleaned up, and I'm going to function test it running a locomotive on it.
This is an old Lifelike Proto 2000 that I did a DCC install on. It does not have a Keep Alive capacitor. So what I'm looking for is the lights to flicker. And so I'm testing my track, making sure everything's functioning like it should. And everything's looking pretty good. Now this locomotive, I don't keep it in my display cab and I just have it in a drawer. It's kind of a test mule. When I do some work on a track, I'll, I'll run this over it first before I uh, subject any of my good models to it. And I test each of the routes just to make sure everything is working like it should before I move on to the next step. And like I mentioned, I look for flickering lights since this locomotive does not have a keep alive capacitor. Well, still more work to be done on this section of buried track. I think I'm going to end this video here. So I want to thank you for watching. And I hope you come back and join me again.